Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship this morning on the third Sunday in the Easter season. We're going to hear the story today of Jesus appearing to his disciples in Luke's Gospel and saying these words to them. Peace be with you. So we take a moment now to prepare ourselves to come into God's presence, ready to worship. So let's pray. Loving God, we come this day seeking your peace, the deep peace that is beyond anything we can ever fully understand. We come to learn more of what it means to be your children. We come filled with hope in the knowledge that Christ is alive. We come with our hearts full of joy to worship you. Amen. great to be back with you again this week. So this week I wonder what are we going to be thinking about? Do you like the beach behind me? Isn't it awesome? I love talking from the beach as you know but maybe today am I actually at the beach or am I in my study? Is this my study? 
No, it's not my study. Maybe I've got a room with a view. I wish I did have that view. That's not my room either. How about an upper room? Things sometimes aren't as they seem. Now I must admit, my previous locations, I've actually been there. Today though, I'm using a bit of movie magic to take me to these places. Sometimes things aren't as they seem. In today's reading, Jesus appears to his disciples. He appears like that. How amazing was that? They were shocked, they were worried, they didn't know what to happen. And here's my next picture, a roller coaster. Yeah, because life is like a roller coaster, isn't it? The disciples must have had a roller coaster full of emotions at that time. And we're gonna think about that a little bit as we do our craft activity. Now our craft activity today is a really good one. It is a card that we can send to people. So we are going to appear in my room and we actually are gonna be at my place when we do our craft and we'll talk a little bit about why I finished with the roller coaster picture. Okay, see you back at my place. Here we go. Okay, so I am really here. This really is my place and we really are going to do our craft now. The craft today is very, very simple. Uh, in fact, it's one that I would like you all to do because it's a lovely one for all of us to get involved with. All you're going to need is some felt tips. Yeah, felt tips. It'd be really good if you get nice, colourful, bright ones. Okay, and you're also going to need a sheet of card. Sheet of card. Card's better because it, the, the felt tips don't tend to go through as much with the card. So do you wanna know what you're gonna make? You are gonna make yourselves a card to send to someone. It says, peace be with you. And it's really bright and colorful and I've got a rainbow behind it. It is simply that. Now, what we're gonna do is just to make it run slightly better and smoother, I'm gonna shuffle over in front. Do you notice I've still got some eggs left? How cool is that? I'm gonna shuffle over a bit and we're gonna run the craft video there to show you how to make this. It's very simple, just watch it through. Remember, you can always pause it if you get a bit unsure. I've got the Easter eggs out because we're still in Easter. We're still celebrating Easter, and it is still that Easter story that we've got. The disciples are in an upper room. The two disciples, the two travellers that were on their way to Emmaus have just returned. They are talking about what was going on. They don't know what's happening. There's been some witnessing of Jesus, but they're still not 100% sure of what is going on. And then Jesus suddenly appears and he's there. He's there with them, but he wants them to know that and he doesn't want them to be afraid. So he utters the words, peace be with you. And he alleviates their fears and there's what their worries in fear and worry is why I showed you the picture of the roller coaster. Let's see if I can get it up there again. We got it? Yeah, roller coaster. Yeah, that picture there. Because a roller coaster is a bit like our lives, isn't it? Our lives go up and down. We have some really good days, not so good days. We have times when we get flung around and we're shoved in all different places and it's never a straightforward path, is it? Sometimes it can be really exhilarating and great fun and other times it can be uh, really scary and not so good. Life can be like a roller coaster. Our feelings can be all over the place. And I would imagine that that's what the disciples were feeling at that time. But Jesus uttered the words, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Imagine that sense of calm that must have come over them at that point. And then he ate with them, didn't he? He had dinner with them. And we're going to reflect a bit more about that when um, we have our talk a little bit later on. So I wonder, is there anyone you know that might be a little bit anxious at the moment? Is there anyone you know that might be a little bit fearful at the moment? Maybe it's you. But I'll tell you what, why don't you make this card and draw this card and uh, engage in the activity? And then maybe you can send this to that person with a message of hope inside, with a message to say you're thinking of them, with a message to say you care and that God loves them. Now, on my card, I also drew a rainbow because I like the rainbow. The rainbow is a wonderful sign of hope. And I did lots of colours around the piece. But if you notice, my words are all broken up, aren't they? They're not like one colour because 
that's a bit like our feelings. Sometimes we can, the morning we can wake up and feel really miserable all the time. By lunchtime we can feel really happy and energised. And by the evening something might be worrying us or playing on our minds. So our lives aren't straightforward and simple. So I, I create them as a bit of a puzzle there. But did you notice that in the you I put a heart to remind me that God loves me? But it's still a bit plain. Do you know what would be great is if you did your cards, is if you put some flowers in. Or some other decorations you don't have to do the rainbow you don't have to do peace be with you it could be words of encouragement because jesus encouraged the disciples but he also told them to be witnesses as well and that's where you can be a witness by sending this card or giving this card to someone that you know might be struggling at the moment and it might give them the courage they need to step out it might give them the reassurance they need to know that they're loved and cared for by God, which, of course, we all are. So every blessing and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the service. And peace be with you. Luke 24, verse 36, Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of the joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. 
the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. If you ever been caught in fog, the whole world becomes cold and grey. Vision is greatly restricted. Everything around appears dull and damp. Then suddenly there is a shining, an extra amount of light. There is a radiance that begins to appear all around. The sun breaks through, the fog lifts and disappears. The day seems so glorious and bright. This was the experience of the disciples with the resurrection. They shut themselves in. They had shut the fullness of life out. They were locked in by sorrow, anxiety and fear. They just wanted to hide. It was then he came. He came because he was needed. He came back from the dead. He came to be with them. He came to guide them to help them, to be friends with them, to transform their world and ours. It's amazing, isn't it? I wonder what your feelings are about the disciples hiding in that upper room. Do you relate to them? There are many of us nowadays that may think we do. You see, many of us have had to isolate or have been trapped in our rooms because of Covid restrictions, unable to leave unless it was an essential journey. Many have been told they couldn't leave at all because they were at risk. This may make us feel wary about stepping outside now, about going to places that are slightly more crowded. So just maybe, just maybe we have a little bit of understanding of what those disciples were going through. Now, I can't imagine exactly what they were thinking and feeling because let's face it, they must have been going through sadness, grief, mourning, shock, bewilderment, and numbness, just to name a few of those roller coaster emotions that people go through when they lose someone that they love. You see, when we lose someone we care about, it hurts. Do you know what? Even if we're expecting it, it still hurts. There's pain, there's sorrow, and there is a grieving process. So I wonder what exactly were those disciples feeling? Their Good Friday was anything but good. They didn't have the knowledge we have in Jesus' teaching. You see, he did tell them what to expect. But in reality, I don't think they fully grasped what it meant. Well, not at that time. Anyway, they had heard of the two sightings of Jesus, one at the tomb and one of the two travellers on their way to Emmaus. So I'd imagine that they would have been going through a number of things in their minds at this time. Now, although we may be able to re relate a little to being locked in, we still need to consider all those things all those things that they've gone through as we explore this passage in three stages. Yes, I know it's a three point stage. I don't normally do it this way, but it just seems to fit today. So we're going to start by looking at the welcome and reassurance that Jesus does at the start of the passage. Then the fellowship that he engages with, along with the instructions of witness. So starting with reassurance and welcome. We remember that disciples' emotional state must have been all over the place. They're faced with Jesus suddenly appearing amongst them. It doesn't say he walked in or entered the room. He appears amongst them. No wonder they were startled and they were afraid. They must have thought they had seen a ghost. Now, to be honest, in Jesus' time, it was not uncommon for people to experience or believe they experienced seeing the recently deceased. Now, you may be thinking that that's frightening in itself and that that's why they were frightened. After all, 
Should they have been frightened? They'd already heard that Jesus has appeared twice before. Surely they should have expected this. It appears it is one thing to accept something on someone else's say so, and quite another to accept it for yourself, even if the evidence is right in front of you. So rather than Jesus, they initially just see a ghost. Rather than joy, they experience fear. Their minds are closed to Jesus at this moment. I wonder how many times we struggle with how people cannot see God's love for them. How many times do we get upset because people just can't seem to see what is so obvious to us? But don't let it get you down. The disciples themselves didn't recognise Jesus initially. And if they struggled, I think we can give ourselves some slack. Don't you? So what does Jesus do to alleviate their fear? What does Jesus do to reassure them? He gives them a greeting. Peace be with you. A greeting that should reassure. But understandably, they understandably, they are still a little bit worried they're still thinking it's a ghost so he goes one step further he asks them to touch his wounds now interestingly it's in john's gospel that thomas is the one that instigates that action but in this passage jesus instigates it and asks all of his followers to touch so Jesus is making a point that he's not a ghost and he's also trying to convince him that it is him. He is reassuring them. And I wonder, I'm going to wonder now, bringing us back up to date, I'm going to wonder as we come out of lockdown, do we need to consider how we welcome others? Do we need to enable people to experience Christ through our welcome, through our offering of peace be with you? We need to be aware that some may find it difficult to transition from being locked in their rooms to stepping outside, being mindful that people aren't used to being in large groups like they were before. And just remember the words of Jesus. He didn't jump on the disciples. He didn't demand them to do things. He just said, peace be with you. He allowed them time to process it. So rather than bombarding the disciples with his mission, he did something else. He ate with them. He shared in fellowship with them. And in sharing that meal, he put their minds at ease. He was allowing them to relax. So one way of thinking about this process that may help us understand it slightly more is the good old cup of tea. Yeah, I'm serious. A cup of tea. If someone knocks on your door uh, in the days when people could come and visit and they will be able to again soon, they knock on their door. And if they were worried or anxious about something, what is the first thing we offer? Can I get you a drink? Can I get you a cup of tea? You sit down and relax. I will go and make you a drink. I will go and make you that cup of tea. It's the process of making it makes the difference your guest is asked to sit down they're asked to relax they're given a moment to think to breathe to ponder before engaging in conversation that moment gives them the space that they need that can make the difference it can bring a sense of reassurance a sense of calm upon their thinking and jesus is doing just that as he asks them for something to eat. He is enabling a sense of calm to unfold. He is enabling normality to take place. He is showing them that he is real. Again, he is showing them that he is real because after all, a ghost couldn't eat. For the disciples, this is demonstrating without any doubt that Jesus was physically present with them at that time. Jesus liked sharing meals. It enabled him to talk. It engaged with those present. It enabled him to share his thoughts to those listening. And it's still the same today. Meals enable us 
to talk, to share ideas with each other, to get to know each other better. As a family, one blessing through lockdown is the fact that I've been able to share meals with my family, to be able to sit around a table and have conversations about what we've been up to. In this meal, Jesus has noticed and he is having his followers open their minds. He is basically seeing the slowness of their heart and fearful misunderstandings being turned around to being open and have joyful recognition of who he was. He is unlocking what is stopping them from believing. He is reassured. He is welcomed and he is relaxed the disciples. He is now reminding them of the scriptures. He is reminding them of what needs to take place. This again is so reassuring for me individually and also for us as Jesus followers. You see, those closest to Jesus still needed help to understand. They didn't quite get it, did they? And this is those closest to him. So it gives me hope that when I struggle to understand something, when I'm not quite sure that I know I'm in good company. Verse 49, which isn't part of this lectionary reading today, it states that the disciples uh, need to stay so they become clothed with the power upon high, which enables them to witness. Now, we know that that power is the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that can help guide us as we become witnesses to Jesus's love in all he did for us. And it's this final bit that I want to reflect on now, witness. Jesus said, you are witnesses to these things. And he instructed them, and actually us, in repentance and forgiveness of sins. And he instructed them not to preach it to Jerusalem or to the Jews, but to all the nations, beginning with Jerusalem and working outwards. Now, The Jews expected everyone to come to Jerusalem. Their mission model was bringing people into Jerusalem. Jesus' mission model was to go out to the people, was to go out to the world, not expect the world to come to him. I think sometimes we should consider this with our mission today. Do we expect expect the church to come to us? Should we not rather go to them rather than them come to us. Jesus is present with them, but he knows he has to return to his father. He needs them to be witnesses for him, going out into the world, living the way he lived, showing the world what it is to know and love Christ. We are called to be witnesses. We are called to share this good news. Now, each year, the Archbishop of Canterbury recommends a a reading book for the Lent period. This year's book was called Living His Story by Hannah Steele. It's a wonderful book about sharing our story and God's story. Now, some of us may be a little bit wary about sharing our stories or or about thinking that we can't evangelise or be witnesses. But actually, Hannah's got a great bit of advice. She says... As we seek to live his story in our world today, we are not charged with the burden of taking God to places where he is not already present. Instead, we are called to simply listen and look for signs of openings where he might be at work and ask him where we might join in with him. I love that we meet God where he is already at work. We are to be witnesses to God in our lives. We are called to help people see past the fog in their lives so they can experience the clarity and warmth of Jesus' love in their lives. So as we step out of lockdown, may we be welcoming to all so that we can engage in fellowship and enable them to witness and be witnesses of the greatest love of all. So every blessing to you as you journey out to be witnesses of Christ's love, today and always. Amen. 
So now we come to our time of prayer. Prayer for others, prayer for the world, prayer for our nation, for the church. So let us pray. Gracious God, you come to us in unexpected places, in a crowded room, travelling, journeying on a dusty road, in a conversation, in the stillness of silence. You come to us in our doubt, our fear, our sorrow. You come in the power of the resurrection, bringing us your peace. God of peace, we are thankful and we pray that you will teach us to be peacemakers, the bringers of peace to a troubled world. And so we pray for peace in the places of the world where there is violence and conflict. We think especially today of Myanmar and of Northern Ireland. Give wisdom and insight to all who hold power that peaceful solutions to the unrest in these places may soon be found. We pray for the sharing of vaccines for COVID-19 across the world. May the leaders of the nations work together to ensure that equal access is given to all. We pray for all who are grieving, for those mourning the loss of close family, thinking especially of Queen Elizabeth and the royal family following the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. May they know your peace and be comforted by your presence. We pray for those who are living with the effects of climate change. Reduced crops, increased risk of flooding, the loss of their homes. May all who face an uncertain tomorrow be granted relief from their distress. And may they know your peace in their time of trouble. And we pray for all who face mental health struggles. May the support they need be made available and may they know your loving presence and your peace with them, always. We remember this day all in our nation and around the world who suffer the effects of racism. We pray for a levelling of systems and an honest discussion, a genuine listening to the experiences of those who continue to be adversely affected by racial prejudice and inequality in every area of life. And we take a moment now to name in the silence of our hearts any individuals who are known to us and who are in particular need this day. And we pray that you would bring them your peace, loving God. God of love, who raised Christ from the grave, accept all these our prayers, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen.
And so now to our final blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Deep peace of the risen Christ to you. Amen.